when we were doing stoichiometry calculations, if we're given a quantity of two different reactants, it becomes a limiting reactant calculation. In, in a limiting reactant calculation, we have to identify which is a limiting reactant. Uh, the limiting reactant is the reactant that gets used up first. And once it's used up, the reaction has to stop. So it limits the reaction. So to identify the limiting reaction, one way is to calculate how much product is produced from both reactants. The smaller amount of product comes from the limiting reactant, and that is the theoretical yield of the product, that smaller amount. Or another way, we can calculate moles of reactant over coefficient of reactant. And for only ask, asking this question, what's the limiting reactant, this way is slightly quicker. So in this particular problem, it's a single replacement reaction. We're adding zinc to sulfuric acid. And the zinc and the hydrogen exchange places. So we end up with a zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas being produced. And these reactions are, can only go in one direction. We can't bubble hydrogen through zinc sulfate and get the reverse reaction to go through. But we have a, a mass of zinc, we have concentration and volume of the sulfuric acid, so we have quantities of both. So I will show both this, both methods of doing this. So we're going to have problems like this uh, on the test where we have a reaction, we ask these multiple parts to it. So we have to be prepared to do this. So I want to do a um, calculate moles. So I want to convert our grams into moles. So for zinc, we have 50 grams. Then we divide that by the molar mass of zinc. Then we're going to divide by the the coefficient, the coefficient is one up here. So we're dividing by one. So we run this through our calculator. We end up with a um, 0.765. We do a similar thing for the sulfuric acid. In this case, we do uh, our concentration 2.30 moles per liter. Multiply by 0.275 liters, then divide by the coefficient, which again is one. When we run this through our calculator, we end up with a 0 0.633. So this is smaller. This is larger. So once we decide this is larger, we will never use this again. This is smaller, so that means our sulfuric acid is the limiting reactant. Calculating how much product, another thing that we'll be doing. So how many grams of hydrogen gas is produced? And after we cover properties of gases uh, in the next chapter, we can maybe calculate that the pressure or volume of the gas also. But once we know the limiting reactant, all of our calculations are going to start with the limiting reactant. So we'll start with the limiting reactant. Well, I'll do both ways, but I'll start with the limiting reactant since I know it right here. Uh, so uh, for sulfuric acid, got our 2.30 moles per liter, multiplying by a 0.275 liter. We do our stoichiometric ratio, which is going to be one over one.
and then we're multiplying by the molar mass of H2, which is a 2.016 grams per mole. We run this through our calculator, and we're going to get 1.28 grams of hydrogen gas. So let's do it for zinc also, uh, treating as if uh, we're still calculating the limiting reaction, we're showing the, the long method of doing it. So we have our zinc, 50 grams. We divide by its molar mass. We do the stoichiometric ratio, which is one over one. You multiply by the molar mass of H2. We run this to our calculator and we get 1.54 grams of H2. So we have the two amounts of H2. The larger one we'll never use. The smaller one, that would be the theoretical yield and again we see that our sulfuric acid is our limiting reactant. And why does this first method work? So this first method takes the um, conversion into moles and it takes the coefficient of the sulfuric acid. So again, it will be the conversion of the moles and the coefficient of the zinc. So the second part of the calculation is identical for both of them. So the first part here, turning into moles and dividing by the coefficient is what determines which is going to have the smaller answer and determine which is the limiting reactant. So one of our products is a solution. So we can ask what's the concentration of the solution. We have this statement here, assume no volume change, but sometimes as we do reactions, the volume can change uh, even when it doesn't look like it should change. So, again, we're going to start with the limiting reactant. So we have our 2.30 moles per liter of sulfuric acid. We do our stoichiometric, uh, we multiply by the volume in liters, 0.275 liters. Now we do our stoichiometric ratio, one zinc sulfate or one sulfuric acid. And the product of this is going to give us the moles of zinc sulfate. To get the concentration, we have moles per liter, so we have to divide by the liters here. So we're just adding a little powder into the liquid, saying that the volume doesn't change. So it's going to remain as 275 mLs or 0.275 liter. Uh, so this is a easy calculation to do. I don't even have to pull out my calculator because I see we got one over one. The liter is going to cancel off. So we end up with a 2.30 molarity of the zinc sulfate. So we have one more that we're going to do. So we've calculated the mass of hydrogen gas, the concentration of zinc sulfate. Now what we're going to do is calculate how much of the 
zinc is left over. So this is our limiting reactant, sulfuric acid. So the zinc is in excess. So some of the zinc will not react. That's what we're asking that we'll ask them to calculate right now. So of course, we're gonna start off with our limiting vacuum, sulfuric acid. So we have our 2.30 moles per liter, multiplied by the 0.275 liters. So that's our H2SO4. We do our stoichiometric ratio. So it's gonna be one mole of zinc of one mole of sulfuric acid. And then we want to multiply by the atomic mass of zinc to um, figure out how many grams are consumed. We run this through our calculator and we get 41.4 grams of zinc. So we could have started off with sulfuric acid and said how much zinc will be used up. So this is how much is used up. This is consumed or used up. So excess will be original amount. Minus the consumed amount. That will give us, uh, see, that's uh, 8.6 grams of excess zinc. 